Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dishnet34 here welcoming you to tonight's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 192, Milestones 2. How is it going, y'all? Oh boy, what a week it has been so far. Hopefully, y'all have been having a great week here in Perfect Team and... Oh man, it, it, it's been a little bit crazy for you, boy, in real life, but you know what? We are here tonight to show off some pretty doggone great cards tonight. Oh man, oh man. So hopefully y'all are having a wonderful, wonderful day today. Oh man, but let's just go ahead, let's just go ahead and get right to it tonight. Man, we got, we got plenty of stuff on the docket. You got the Milestones 2 set. We got some uh, formats for the Perfect Team Championship Series coming up tonight. We got some limited edition cards we're going to be releasing. We got, we got a lot of stuff tonight. Let's go ahead and get started. And we start off, as always, with a look at Perfect League. Right now, in the American Conference East Division, you got the Philadelphia Cross Foxes in first place with a record of 55 and 45. Four and a half games up on the Ottawa Hammerheads in that division right now. Um, AC Central Division, as of today at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Doggone it, forgot to change the date on the freaking slide. Uh, the Melbourne Mongeese in first place right now with a record of 57 and 41. One game up on the Edmonton Whales. Very close race right there between the Mongeese and the Whales. The AC West Division. You got the Erie Seawolves at 61 and 40. Record, uh, record over there. Three games up on the Jackson Generals. Jackson Generals, oh man, they have been on a bit of a funk right now oh boy three and seven in their last 10 but they have won their last two so there's a little bit of a little bit of a silver lining right there if you ask me in the ac koufax division you got the 90s expansions in first place right now with a record of 59 and 41 three and a half games up on the park slope bourbon bros so some fairly decently close divisions right here but if you want to talk about some close divisions we're going to take a look at the nc the national conference here in just a little bit let's start with the nc east division you got the yukon silvers right now in first place with the best record in perfect league right now 63 and 38 on their win loss record a whopping eight and a half games up on the manchester worker bees we're at 54 and 46 Woo. Ooh. <coughs> Excuse me. In the NC Central Division, a little bit closer in that one. You got the Mercy Side Insufferables in first place right now with a record of 54 and 46. Two and a half games up on both the FFS Snails and the Webster Groves Supercells. However, the Snails and the Supercells, they are coming right up behind them. So we'll see how that division plays out in the next day or two. In the NC West Division, you got yourself a really tight race at the top right here between Taylor Swift and the Crozet Storm Kings. One game separating each of these two teams at 62 and 39 and 61 and 40. Uh, we're not going to talk about the rest of that division, but very close race up there at the top in the nc maze division finally we got the false hustle in first place with a record of 53 and 46 but man oh man if you're looking for an even closer race than the race in the nc west division you got the dorset devil dogs in second place right now one half game behind the false hustle at 52 and 46 that's a pretty darn close race right there. One half game separating each of those two teams. So got some pretty close divisions all around, except for the 
NC East Division right now in Perfect League. Should be fun to see how that is going to shake out for the rest of this season. And don't forget, Sunday night, we'll be broadcasting the Perfect League World Series right here on twitch.tv slash OOTP development. Two of these teams going to be making it to the finals. Who are they going to be? Find out Sunday night. What season is this? Is this uh, 2060? 2060? I think, we're get, I think we're getting right up there to 2060. Yeah, we are in 2060. Holy cow. Man, time, time flies. Time really flies when y'all are having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, one of life's supreme mysteries. Exactly, exactly. All right, so there's a look at the perfect league standings. Let's go ahead and get to some limited edition cards for the evening. We got a couple of 100 copy limited edition cards for you all tonight. This is not the last week of new content. This is not the last week of new content. No, no, no. We still got a couple more weeks left of this. Still got a couple more weeks left of content over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and get to our limited edition cards on the evening in our first one tonight. Bit of a stalwart in those Kansas City Royals rotations of the 70s and the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you 57 overall from the 1986 Royals right-handed starter, Dennis Leonard. 64 stuff, 65 movement, 80 on the control. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup combo right here. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 66 stuff, 71 movement, 81 control against righties. Versus lefties, 61 stuff, 57 movement, 79 on the control. 83 stamina, 41 on the hold runners. Now, Dennis Leonard, this was a little bit of a down year for him. This is the final season of Mr. Leonard's career. Went 8-13 and 13 this year. The only full season of his career with a losing record. Had a 4-4-4 ERA on the year with a 3-5-9 FIP. So peripherals pretty darn good for Dennis Leonard in that 1986 season. Uh, 5.3 strikeouts per 9 and 2.4 walks per 9 that year. That walk rate though, 6.2%. Translated to uh, fourth lowest walk percentage of his career, um, and that and that career lasted how long again? Let me let me find out again. Uh, Dennis Leonard went from seventy four to eighty six. Um, did not play in the nineteen eighty four season for the Royals, but yeah, he spent he spent his whole entire career with the Royals. Actually, had a couple of. Few 20 game seasons there in the 77 season, 78 and 1980 seasons. Um, led the league in, in uh, games started in those uh, th in three seasons as well. Pretty good stuff right there for Dennis Leonard. So 57 overall, Dennis Leonard, 100 copies coming soon into packs tonight. He is in perfect league, perfect team, 23. All right, let's go on to our second and final limited edition card of the evening tonight. And we got ourselves a pretty decent player for the uh, for the New York Yankees in the 60s and the 70s. Um, yeah, he had some pretty good seasons in his career. Ladies and gentlemen, the left fielder peak card from the New York Yankees, 92 overall, Roy White. 68 Babip, 63 power, 97 avoid K, 86 contact, 106 cap power, and 78 on the eye. A lot better against righties than he is against lefties. 70 Babip, 67 power, 96 avoid K, 89 contact, 109 gap power, and 82 on the eye in his career. Uh, this guy, very much, pretty... Pretty good against righties in his career versus left again and against lefties. Um, 813 OPS against righties in his career. 696 OPS against lefties. Um, pretty decent defense out there in left field as well. 93 range, 85 error, 78 on the arm. This guy going to hit you some doubles. Probably going to get you some triples as well. 
uh, 73 speed, 85 stealing, 79 on the base running, and can bunt a little bit too. 59 sack bunt, 64 on the bunt for hit. Roy White, pretty good numbers in his career from 65 to 79. Um, to 271, 364, 04 in his career with 160 career home runs, 758 RBI. He was a two-time All-Star in both the 69 and the 70 seasons. Uh, career walk-to-strikeout ratio, that was pretty darn good. Uh, 934 walks, 708 career strikeouts. Um, he actually led the American League in walks in the 1972 season, had 99 of them. Pretty good stuff. He had quite a few seasons of 80, 90 walks there. Um, he had 95 of them in his uh, 1970 All-Star season, which, by the way, that 1970 season played all 162 games, one of only two times in his career that he did so, hit 296 with 22 homers that year. Holy cow. That's uh that's pretty darn good. Um, he actually got some MVP votes in a few of those seasons as well. Uh, never really got higher than twelfth in AL MVP voting, but but he had a very solid career. Had a very solid uh, peak. Um, 1969 hit 290. We talked about the 70 season. Hit uh, 292 in 1971. Um, 75 and 76 he hit 290 and 286. He he was pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So there you go. Roy White from the New York Yankees. It. Perfect team. 23. Alrighty. Well, once again, y'all, you know, we talk about, we talk a lot about stats on this stream. And I think y'all know by now where I really love to go to, to get my statistical fix, to find some of the more unique stats that are out there because you know I, I love looking at stats in my spare time. All right, I'm not I'm not quite like you know a big old stat nerd, but you know what I appreciate just kind of looking at stats on on that a lot. So this that is why I really enjoy Stat Head Baseball powered by Baseball Reference and. You can too if you use code 23OOTP25. You can get $25 off an annual baseball or all sports subscription to Stathead. Hashtag ad. The offer expires on July 1st, 2023. Guys, this is probably one of the most probably one of the most. Uh, powerful statistical tools for baseball on the entire internet. On the entire internet. And EBC talking about uh, their stats head team being, being really, really helpful. I, I can definitely attest to that as well. So $25 off annual baseball or all sports subscriptions. They don't just do baseball. They do football. They do basketball as well. They got, they got some great services over there. So that is Baseball Reference Stat Head. You can save $25 off with code 23OTP25. Offer expires July 1st. All right, guys. Now we got some more news and notes for you all tonight. And um, I will um, be taking my... Well, I don't know if I'll need to take my face off the screen for this, uh, given the uh, orientation here. But... We have a tournament refresh incoming. Let's go ahead and break that down a little bit. You got some format and start time changes over there on the left side. Uh, you got some daily double non-live, double round robin start time changes here. You got, got some uh, format changes as well. Some run environment changes. Um, the Saturday tournament lab in the traditional tournament section that is now going to be a bronze floor diamond ceiling with an 1894 cap and 1894 for the year. Um, Friday low diamond and the Friday low bronze is going to get some new start times as well. The Saturday overnight under the covers is going to be starting at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Pretty good stuff right there. Uh, you got Daily Iron Cap getting a new run environment. Daily Low Diamond Non-Live Cap getting a new run environment. Daily Special Edition Cap getting a different run environment. But the big news 
is the tournaments added and the tournaments deactivated. We got a new perfect draft for you all. It is the Daily High Noon Perfecto. Oh, man. A Daily Perfecto draft to enter. Oh, boy. That's going to be... That is going to be a fun one right there. Uh, we got some new traditional tournaments coming in. We got the Friday Special Edition Gold Cap with a 1900 cap modern day run environment with a designated hitter. You got the Sunday Bronze members only. Uh, you got modern day DH. You got a Sunday Bronze tournament, guys. Pretty cool stuff right there. Then you got the Daily Gold Only, which is a modern day uh, DH kind of tournament right there. And then we got the Quick Gold Only Cap with a 2160 cap and a DH for the ever popular King of Gold competition that is being spearheaded by some of our users on the Discord. Oh man, that, that's always a fun one. Every year, they every year, right near the end of the cycle, they like to do the old King of Gold competition. Try to get uh, try to get some engagement for those tournaments. And it's it's a very fun tournament. Highly recommend it. Get in that if you can. Um, however, we got some tournaments deactivated as well to make room for those. Daily Perfect Drafts 3 and 4 and Daily Perfect Draft Historicals 2 and 3 will be deactivated. And for the traditional tournaments... The Friday Powerfully Live Non-Special, the Sunday Low Iron Brunch, the Daily OOTP Era Cap, and the Live Low Gold Quick are going to be deactivated. So there you go. We got Tournament Refresh incoming starting very, very soon, I believe. I forget the timing on this, Nicolino. I know Nicolino is in the chat. He'll let me know about the timing on this one because I think it'll start populating on Monday. I forget when the first ones are actually going to be running. So if Nicolino, Nicolino could get some uh, clarification. Plan for it is for it to be activated on Monday. All right. Plan is for it to be activated on Monday. So you'll be seeing these starting on Monday. All right. All right. Come And also, speaking of of tournaments speaking of tournaments perfect team championship series number eight it is coming and it is coming soon in fact it is next saturday february 11th the eighth and final perfect team championship series Beginning at noon Eastern with finals coverage on the OOTP Twitch channel. The top 128 teams from the last five cumulative weeks in each of the four formats. Daily and weekly perfect draft, daily and weekly traditional tournament will be participating in the PTCS. And don't forget, later this month, we will have the second perfect team master series and we will have details for you on those uh coming up in the next couple of weeks so what are the formats going to be don't forget i'm just passing these along so here we go the daily traditional perfect team championship series is going to be a high bronze floor diamond ceiling cap 21 11 cap with a modern day run environment and a designated hitter. Should be a fun tournament right there. High bronze floor, diamond ceiling cap. Going to be a bit of a variety of uh, of cards that will be on these rosters right here. So, should be a fun one right there. As for the weekly traditional, it's something that we haven't quite 100% done yet with the PTCS. And... I don't know if a lot of you maybe thought this was coming sometime, but it is going to be the Wild Wild West. It's going to be a straight open tournament in the weekly traditional modern day run environment with a designated hitter. Oh boy, that could be a bit interesting, y'all. Could be a bit interesting in that one. And finally, the daily and weekly perfect draft is going to be a perfecto perfect draft. 
modern day run environment with a designated hitter. And don't forget that first place in each PTCS will get a new PTCS exclusive. While second through 32nd place will get brand new cards that will eventually be showing up in packs. Let's go ahead and see what those cards are going to be. And we start with the 17th through 32nd place reward for the 8th Perfect Team Championship Series. And that is going to be a very famous Oakland Athletics outfielder who's uh, who's known for probably a pretty big blooper in MLB history. And that is going to be 84 overall right fielder Jose Canseco. 69 BABIP, 112 power, 61 avoid K. 94 contacts, 67 gap, and 72 on the eye. Some big power and some big contact against lefties right here. 130 power, 102 contact with some decent eye, 82 eye. Um, probably going to strike out quite a bit with the uh, with the low avoid K right there. Uh, some pretty nice BABIP, all things considered. 69 BABIP against both lefties and righties. Uh, I can play both left and right field right here. Uh, 60 outfield range, 59 error, and 72 on the outfield arm. 72 speed, 77 stealing, 75 on the base running. Um, extreme pole guy, spray hitter, fly ball hitter. This guy's probably going to hit some dingers in uh, probably some low gold tournaments, all things considered. You're gonna, definitely going to see a lot of dingers out of this guy. Now, don't forget, Jose Canseco did steal, did have a 40-40 season. That's pretty darn cool right there, Jose Canseco. Um, yeah, he had that 40-40 season in uh, 1988. 42 homers, 40 steals. That was a darn good year right there. As for the 9th through 16th place card, it's going to be someone who, um, you know is part of the debate for the pitcher of the 80s. And um, in my opinion, really not the pitcher of the 80s. Ladies and gentlemen, 89 overall, Jack Morris from the Detroit Tigers. Big stuff right here. 103 stuff, 67 movement, 83 control, fastball slider, forkball, changeup combo, 98 stamina, 44 on the hold runners. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 105 stuff, 68 movement, 84 on the control. What's his pitch to score rating? Pretty darn high, if you ask me. So there's the uh, ninth through 16th place reward. Now, who will be the 5th through 8th place award in this perfect team championship series? If you like some defense from your shortstops, you will find it here. 93 overall, Burt Campanaris, peak card from the Oakland A's. Not getting him for the bat, though, although it's a little bit of a bat. But look at the defense right there. 104 range, 91 error, 92 arm, and 101 on the turn double play, some pretty good speed stealing and base running here as well. 94 speed, 103 stealing, 98 on the base running. Um, as far as the back goes, not much to write home about on it. 65 Babbitt, 59 power, 83 avoid K, 76 contact, 74 gap power, 63 I. Is a little bit better against lefties than he is against righties with the bat. 68 Babbitt, 56 power, 97 on the avoid K, 83 contact, 80 gap power, and 66 on the eye. How do you get invited to the Perfect Team Championship Series? You have to finish in the top 128 in um, daily perfect drafts, weekly perfect drafts, daily traditional tournaments, or weekly traditional tournaments um, during the entry period, which is usually about four or five weeks. And, you know, place high in those tournaments, and uh, you might be able to uh, get into the, um, yeah, get into uh, get into the PCCS. 
Now, as for the third and fourth place reward, we got a pretty good right fielder for y'all here. And that is 99 overall from the New York Giants, George Harper. 74 BABIP, 89 power, 96 avoid K, 101 contact, 90 gap power, and 99 on the eye. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 76 BABIP, 91 power, 97 avoid K, 103 contact, 91 gap, and 100 on the eye. Can play all three outfield positions. Mainly left field and right field, 85 range, 81 error, and 82 on the arm. <coughs> Excuse me. 50 speed, 69 stealing, and 60 on the base running. And look at that bunt up there. 110 on the sack bunt and 100 on the bunt for hit. This guy, ooh, it's going to terrorize some defenses if you're, uh, if you're a bit of a small ball team. Going to really, really terrorize that third base and make him, make him maybe make a pressure throw over to third. Maybe, uh, maybe make him throw it away. Maybe you never know. You never know on those bunts right there. So that's for third and fourth place. Now, as for second place, oh boy, we got a, We got a pretty decent right-handed pitcher for y'all here. And that my friends is 100 overall peak card. From the Boston Red Sox, Tex Hewson, 101 stuff, 105 movement, 94 on the control. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. Slider, curveball, screwball, changeup, sinker, and knuckleball combo. 107 stamina and 70 on the hold runners. Yes, he does have a little bit of a knuckleball on him, y'all. 103 stuff, 104 movement, and 96 control against righties 98 105 91 against lefties and he's got a little bit of eye in his uh in his bat here 43 eye and 36 on the sack bunt but good sinker good curveball got a little bit of a slider a little bit of a screwball not too terrible right there for tex Houston. but everyone's asking everyone's asking who is the PTCS8 champion reward. Oh boy. You want to talk about some power, some contact, some defense, some eye right here from your first baseman. You've got it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the PTCS8 champion reward. First baseman from the Houston Astros, it is 100 overall, Jeff Bagwell. 92 BABIP, 118 power, 97 avoid K, 125 contact, 100 gap power, and 110 on the eye. Look at those ratings against lefties. 95 BABIP, 122 power, 100 avoid K, 125 contact, 104 gap, and 113 on the eye. Crouch, swing, and all right there. Holy cow. And some really good defense over at first base. 90 range, 81 error, 83 arm, 71 on the turn, double play. And he's got a little bit of speed on him as well. 60 speed, 82 stealing, 84 on the base running. Who boy. Jeff Bagwell, probably the most, probably most definitely the best first baseman in Houston Astros history. Was very, very good in the 90s and the aughts for the Astros. Led the league in RBI with 116 of them in 1994. He had 39 homers that year. He had quite a few 30 homer seasons, some 40 homer seasons. Had some very good walk numbers as well. Led the league in 1999 with 149 walks. Had 100 walks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in his career. Career 408 on base percentage. Career 297 average. 449 career homers between 1991 and 2005. He is a Hall of Famer as well and a well-deserved one at that.
best player in Astros history. Very, um, that, that's a very good, yeah, there's, there's a very good case for him being the best player in Houston Astros history. Straight up, straight up. So there you go. Jeff Bagwell from the Houston Astros, the PTCS8 champion reward card. Oh man, some good stuff right there. Now, as the tournament, the, the big tournaments are kind of winding down to a close. You know, we're going to have the last PTCS. We're going to have the last um, Perfect Team Master Series. We're going to have the um, perfect, the second Perfect Team uh, World Championship coming up in March. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking, well, what's going to happen with leaderboards? What's going to happen with uh, tournaments and stuff like that? Well, while the PTCS tournament periods are coming to an end, the leaderboards will still continue with prizes continuing to be distributed to the top 10 in each leaderboard category every single week. Now, the all-time leaders leaderboard, however, will be cut off at the end of the PTCS of this PTCS period. And with that, as we announced at the top of the season, uh, Nic Nicolino announced this early in the season, the top 10 teams in that all-time leaders leaderboard on those leaderboards will receive a free copy of Out of the Park Baseball 24. I believe Nicolino can confirm that. Um, I know Khan's asking if it's top 10 in each category. That is my assumption at all. I that That is my assumption. I do believe... Yeah, yeah, Nicolino, you had that in the uh, in the PDF at the start of the season. Missed that. What'd you say? Um, they're asking if it's top ten in each category on the all-time leaders leaderboard, getting a free copy of uh, OTP twenty four. Um, also, some big news on the uh, choice pack front. Uh, tournament batch one and tournament batch two choice packs are to be phased out, and they will be replaced with tournament batch. All choice packs. Uh, this was by uh, popular pop by popular demand of the community. Winners of these choice packs will get a choice of one card from a selection of twelve randomly selected cards between all from all three tournament batches. Because I yeah, so that that's going to be pretty good addition right there to replace those TB one and TB two choice packs right there so not bad not bad not bad at all so there you go there's some news and notes on the tournaments leaderboards and prizes but wait there's even more news tonight because along with these mission cards these milestones mission reward cards that you are getting tonight we will have a silver and gold card dump released tonight. We will have 74 new gold and silver cards in packs tonight. Let's go ahead and take myself off the screen here to take a look at what I know, just a sampling of who we have tonight. Uh, the gold cards. Oh man, we got some good names here. You got Silver King. You got a guy named guy named Dummy Hoy from the Cincinnati Reds. That's an interesting name right there. You got Frank Fennelly. You got Abner Dalrymple, a left fielder right there. You got a third baseman, Arlie Latham. You got a peak, Coco Crisp, coming out tonight. You got Lyman Bostock from the Minnesota Twins. You got Bobby Lowe. You got Johnny Callison, Earl Whitehill, Frank Kitson. You got a peak, Brian Jordan card, coming out tonight in packs. Um, some silver cards coming to you. You got a couple of 79 overalls. Frank White, Cleet Boyer. Now again, this is just a selection of what you will be seeing in packs tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. You got Frank White. You got Cleet Boyer. Then you got Gary Pettis. You got Gary Matthews. Jim Fergozzi. Uh, Denard Spann. Uh, possibly going to be on the Hall of Fame ballot next year, which would be... Um, Kind of, kind of cool, actually. You know, Denard Spann, very underrated player. Uh, Ray Durham, Jim Clancy, Todd Stottlemyre, a peak Brett Gardner 
That's going to be a fun one right there. Uh, Bullet Joe Bush. You got Joe Rudy. You got Brian Roberts, which I see there's uh, quite a bit of uh, peak Brian Roberts should be a gold. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Uh, Chris Chambliss, peak card from the New York Yankees. Aaron Boone from the Cincinnati Reds is a peak card in here as well. They got Dan McGann. You got a couple of interesting shortstops here. Ozzie Guillen and Rick Burleson. Oh, man. Oh, man. Some fun names on this silver and gold card release tonight. Um, I did see some questions in the chat about Platinum Series 4. Platinum Series 4 cards will be out of packs next Thursday. Next Thursday. Alrighty, alrighty. So there you go. Oh, man. We got, we got plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff coming tonight. All right, guys. Let's get to the main aspect of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Some milestones two cards right here second batch of mission rewards for our milestones program now give you a reminder of what the milestones program is this is a mission program with missions uh based around some major historical accomplishments or some very interesting categories that we have found um at each milestones mission we'll have a card reward to go along with it and each set of Milestones missions will contain five missions with each one different than the last set. So, so you know, there's going to be some diff there are diff there are some different missions in Milestones 1, there's some different ones in Milestones 2, and then there will be some different ones in Milestones 3. And each set of five will have a topper card to go along with it, a reward for completing each of those Five missions. Are these the last missions? Oh, no, no, no. These are not the last missions. Now, if you finish all the missions in each of the three milestone sets that we're going to be releasing, this is number two tonight, so there's going to be one more in a couple of weeks, you'll receive an overall topper for the program. So let's go ahead and start off with our first card of the evening. And let me just say, with, with this card, um, the category, well, the, um, the mission name of this Milestones card is Fire the Torpedoes. Now, torpedoes, you know, they come out of, you know, submarines and stuff like that. So when you think of submarine guys, um, some submarine guys, some sidearm guys, um, you know, these guys have some really funky pitching motions, you know, coming out, coming out of some very unique arm slots that a lot of pitchers do not even dare trying to do. So there are some guys who have had some very unique motion, some unique pitching motions in their career. One of the more unique ones was our first Milestones card of the evening. He holds the National League record for career relief innings pitched. And boy, howdy, if you need a need to get a right-hander out, this guy could get some right-handers out. Ladies and gentlemen, the mission reward for the Fire the Torpedoes mission reward is 99 overall right-handed reliever Kent to Colby from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And oh my God, those splits. 92 stuff, 116 moving and 105 control. But my God, this guy can get some righties out. 111 stuff, 128 movement, 123 on the control. Now, probably saying, why the splits here on Kent to Colby? Well, this guy, 557 career OPS against against righties. While against lefties, I could probably hit off of Kent to Colby. Gave up a slash line against lefties of 280, 375, 383 with 30 career home runs in 2,428 play appearances. Now that is three less than the amount of homers he gave up to right-handed batters 
in his entire career in 3,573 play appearances. So in a lesser amount of plate appearances, he gave up almost as many home runs to lefties as he did righties. So these are some extreme splits that he had in his career. He walked 315 lefties and struck out just 174 of them. So this guy, you don't want this guy facing a lefty, y'all. Those are, uh, yeah. Personally, do not believe you could get a hit off Kent to Colby. I mean, I could try, you know, let me just, let me just hop in my TARDIS, head back to the seventies and, uh, and, uh, give it a shot here. Um, slider sinker combo on this guy. We'll get some extreme ground balls in here. 87 to 89 on the velocity. 51 stamina, 54 on the hold runners. Now the stamina pretty high because he led MLB in games played four times in his career. He had quite a few um, seasons where he had over 100 innings pitch coming out of the bullpen. Um, had some 130 inning seasons in 78 and 79. Um, had a 128 inning season in 1982. Played in 85 games that year. He played in 90, 90 plus games in 78 and 79 in back to back seasons. Uh, he was a 1980 All Star as well. Holds the National League record for career innings in relief. And that is 1,436 and two-thirds innings pitched. You know, all things considered, he had a pretty respectable ERA in his career of a 2.85. Um, strikeout ratio, 4.9. The walk ratio, the walk ratio is a little bit, was a little bit up there. You know, 3.1 walks per nine but he didn't give up a whole lot of homers relatively in his career just 0.4 home runs per nine so there you go Kent to Colby from the Pittsburgh Pirates the reward for the fire the torpedoes mission here in milestones two he's 79 I think dish could file a few off you know what you know I I I, I think I could I could get some hits off of Kenta Colby in the 80s. Maybe. Potentially. All right. So our next milestone mission reward is in a mission reward called Innings Eaters. Now, when we think of Inning Eaters, you know, we got, we got the modern definition of Innings Eaters. But, you know, we got to go way back to, like, to some of the early 1900s baseball when you had guys that would throw until their arms fell off, all right? You got guys who threw 300 innings, maybe sometimes 400 innings in a season. And let me tell you, this guy right here, this, this next reward, holds a couple of MLB records um, as well, but... You know, he had quite a few 300 inning game, 300 inning seasons. He had some 400 inning seasons, but he holds a couple of MLB records here as well. So the winning, the uh, the mission reward for the inning eaters collection is 100 overall right-handed starter Ed Walsh. 100 stuff, 106 movement, 101 control. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 100 stuff, 107 movement, 101 control against righties. 99, 105, and 100 against lefties. Fastball, curveball, screwball, changeup combo on this guy. Ground ball pitcher, 92 to 94 miles an hour. Now, Ed Walsh, let me, let me tell you here. He had between age... Between age 26 and age 31 seasons, he racked up 2,248 innings pitched. And his ERA between those seasons? Oh, nothing, nothing special. Just a 1.69 ERA in that time period. That's a six-year time period. This guy was averaging three. 175 innings pitched a season during that stretch. That is insane to think about nowadays. 
insane. So that's kind of why we have him at uh, 112 stamina, 52 on the hold runners. Now, Ed Walsh in his career had a career record of 195 and 126 with a 182 ERA in his career. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the MLB record for career ERA. That's not bad right there. We have a career ERA under two in a, gosh, how many innings did he throw in his career? Almost 3,000 innings in his career. Now, granted, this is the early 1900s, so still kind of dead ball and stuff like that, but that is very impressive. Um, he had, um, how many complete games did he have in that six-year period I was talking about? He had 197 co complete games in 237 games started, 42 of them shutouts. It's pretty darn good right there. Um, he was a two-time MVP runner-up in back-to-back -back seasons in 1911 and 1912, right around the advent of MVP voting during that period. Uh, like I mentioned, he holds the MLB career record for ERA. He also holds the career record for fielding independent pitching at 202. So this guy's FIP was almost under two as well. That's how insane of a pitcher he was for this time period. That was a 146 ERA plus that 182 ERA. It's not bad. He uh, he struck out quite a bit of batters relative to the time period. 5.3 strikeouts per nine, 1.9 walks per nine. And he had five 300 inning seasons, two of them over 400 innings. He had 422 innings pitched in 07, 464 in 1908. Would you say he ate innings? He definitely ate some innings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Ed Walsh, the mission board for the Inning Eaters mission in Perfect Team 23. All right, the next mission reward comes from a mission that we are calling Rookie of the Year to MVP Hitters. Now, when you think of guys that have won Rookie of the Year and an MVP award in their careers, there is one guy that kind of, you know, stands out a little bit right here. He, this guy, this reward was the first of only two players in their career to win Rookie of the Year and MVP in their first year, in their rookie season. And ladies and gentlemen, the Milestones Mission Reward for Rookie of the Year to MVP hitters is 100 overall Fred Lynn from the Boston Red Sox. 80 BABIP, 99 power, 82 avoid K, 105 contact, 100 gap power, 90 on the eye. Very good against right-handed pitching. 81 BABIP, 101 power, 84 avoid K, 107 contact, 102 gap power, and 93 on the eye. Very good outfielder right here. Can play all three outfield positions, left, center, and right. 97 range, 97 error, and 91 on the arm. Speed, ceiling, and base running. Eh, not quite there. Uh, 46 speed, 68 stealing, 77 on the base running. Now, Fred Lynn, in his career, he had a very solid career, all things considered. 283, 364, 84 on his slash line. 306 home runs, 1,111 RBI. Now, famously, was the MVP and the Rookie of the Year in 1975, hitting 331 with 21 homers and 105 RBI during that 1975 season for the Red Sox. He led all of baseball in doubles that year as well, with 47 of them. Led the American League in runs scored with 103. Led all of baseball in slugging percentage as well, with that five with a 566 slugging percentage. This guy, you know, there were actually now, all things considered, let let's let's take that rookie of the year vote into context here a little bit. Because 
I'm looking at the um I'm looking at the baseball reference here for AL rookie of the year voting. And there were only uh, two rookies on that uh, on that ballot and it was Fred Lynn or Jim Rice and you know what Fred Lynn you know, Jim Rice, he had a pretty good season as well for the Red Sox. They they ran two rookies that year, 145, 144 games each. Uh, but Fred Lynn definitely, um, definitely deserving of that rookie of the year vote. Now, as far as AL MVP voting, you know, there are quite a few guys out there that can make a case for being the MVP that year. Uh, you had John Mayberry, who had a very good season. Jim Palmer, who had a great season on the mound for the Baltimore Orioles that year. Uh, Catfish Hunter had a solid season. Um, Jim Rice actually got third place in AL MVP voting that year, but it was Fred Lynn coming out of top with 22% of the first place vote at 7.4 wins above replacement. Not too shabby getting the AL MVP that year. So there you go. Fred Lynn was MVP rookie of the year. He actually almost got MVP again in 1979, finished fourth in voting that year, hit 333 with 39 home runs and 122 RBI. Now, Fred Lynn, let's be honest, he he only played 150 plus games once in his career. Um, you know, 140 games, he had one, two, three, four seasons where he played over 140 games. He was kind of beset by injuries a little bit in his career, um, but still ended up with, with some solid numbers in his career. Um, but Fred Lynn, Fred Lynn from the Boston Red Sox, it, perfect team, 23, the mission reward for rookie of the year to MVP hitters. All right, next up, we have a mission reward. For, for a mission titled Dingers! Dingers! Now, I know there's a lot of y'all that dig some dingers. And you know what? There's one guy, and I'll just, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say the line. <sighs> you guys, you guys wanna guys want to know the unfortunate truth? Or do you want to see me hit some dingers? Ladies and gentlemen, 100 overall, Mark McGuire from the St. Louis Cardinals. 61 BABIP, 185 power, 59 avoid K, 102 contact, 84 gap power, and 118 on the eye. Look at the splits against lefties. 61 BABIP, 185 power, 62 avoid K, 103 contact, 98 gap power, and 125 on the eye. Yeah, you better hope he hits a dinger because he's not making it all the way home otherwise. <laughs> oh, gracious. This guy is going to sock a few dingers. And uh, not all, so he's going to sock some dingers. He's going to take some bases and not a whole lot else. And the speed. Look at that speed. Look at that speed. Nine speed, 12 stealing. And 10 base running. So don't don't just kind of tie an anchor to his to his ankle and just keep him at first. Right here. 46 range, 78 error, 42 arm, and 46 on the turn double play. Not too terrible over at first base. Definitely, definitely his height is probably gonna be um probably be a big factor in the at uh, first base position ring right there. Now, Mark McGuire. My, oh my, this guy, prolific home run hitter. All things considered, you know. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all know what y'all, y'all, y'all are, are thinking what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking, you know, despite all the circumstances. 
263, 394, 588 in his career from 1986 to 2001. 583 career homers, 1,414 RBI. He was the 1987 Rookie of the Year. 12-time All-Star. Was won a Gold Glove in 1990. He holds an MLB record for at-bat to home run rate. 10.6% of his career at bats ended up in home runs. That's insane right there. And he led MLB in home runs five times, including that epic home run race in 1998, where he hit 70 home runs, beating out Sammy Sosa that year. I believe 98 was the home run chase year. Is either 98 or 99. I might I might be mixing up those two years, but 70 homers, nothing to nothing to shake a uh, stick at. Yep, 98. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, I was right on that. Awesome. Awesome. So there you go. Mark McGuire, the mission reward for the Dingers! Dingers! Mission in. Perfect team, 23. All right. The final mission reward of the evening comes from a mission called The Smell of of victory and when you think about pitchers when you think about winning pitchers you want wins out of your pitchers say say the old baseball writers and stuff like that if you're an old baseball writer oh you love wins you crave those wins you want wins so badly that you would sell your soul for those wins and if there is one pitcher who you want that has the will to win a baseball game for you, look no further than the all-time MLB record holder for winning. Also, also, also losing. But for winning. And ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you 100 overall Cy Young. 97 stuff, 114 movement, 122 control. <coughs> oh boy. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties, but it ain't by much. 98 stuff, 115 movement, 122 control against lefties. 96 stuff, 113 movement, 121 control against righties. Fastball, slider, curveball, screwball, change oof on his pitch repertoire. 110 stamina, 60 on the hold runners. My oh my, Cy Young. 511 career wins and 315 career losses. But 511 career wins. This guy. Proven winner. 2.63 ERA in his career. 7,000. 356 innings pitched in his career. Holds the MLB records for wins. Losses. Games started. Complete games and innings pitched. This guy was the epitome pitcher. Is that, is that a word? Epitome? The, the epitome. Maybe, maybe let, let's just go. Let's, let's go with epi the epitome of pitchers in the 1890s and the early 1900s baseball leagues. He led the league in whip seven times in his career. He led in FIP seven times. Led in walks per nine. He had the lowest walks per nine in all of baseball 14 times in his career. He did not walk a lot of people. Straight up. This guy. 
you know, you talk about, we talked about inning eaters quite a little bit ago. This guy consistently had 400 inning seasons, 300 inning seasons for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. For 15 straight years, he had over 300 innings pitch. Then he had a gap year. Then he had another 300 inning pitch season. Man, oh man, this guy right here, you can smell the scent of victory on him. And he is going to be in perfect team. 23 also you know I, I i think i think it's common knowledge but you know cy young never never won a, a cy young award winner that's, that, that's crazy that's crazy right there you know why would you not award the winner to the guy it's named after <laughs> there you go cy young smell of victory mission reward where's his face I don't know, man. I don't know where it went. Never know. Never know. All right. So, we've gone through the five mission rewards tonight. But now you're wondering, well, who's going to be the milestones to topper? Well, guys. Let, let's travel a bit to the to kind of the modern day here. And, you know, this guy, you know, probably won't get into the hall of fame even though the statistical the stats say he should but the off the field yeah but either way when you look at the stats this guy prolific hitter pretty good defender as well and at one point was the youngest player in major league baseball Ladies and gentlemen, from the New York Yankees, 100 overall, milestones to topper reward, Alex Rodriguez. 86 Babbitt, 114 power, 84 avoid K, 116 contact, 110 gap power, 93 on the eye. And some solid defense as well. 92 range, 98 error, 94 arm, and 100 on the turn double play. Can play both third base and shortstop right here. So you can play him at both spots on the left side of the infield right here. And he's got some decent speed as well. 82 speed, 94 stealing, 86 on the base running. Now, in his career, very prolific career, 295, 385, 50, with 696 career home runs, 2,086 career RBI, three-time MVP, 14-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glove, 10-time Silver Slugger, led the American League in home runs five times in his career, and... He is the most recent MLB player to have played at the age of 18 when he played for the Seattle Mariners in 1994 for 17 games of a cup of coffee in the big leagues. Man, oh man. Alex Rodriguez, you know, probably the best shorts. Let, let's be honest here. Probably the best defensive shortstop on those uh, 2000s Yankee teams. Let's be honest with ourselves here. Um, so yeah, defense, you know, definitely could play in both third and short. Um, yeah, so some pretty good stuff here. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties at the plate. 85 Babip, 120 power, 88 avoid K, 119 contact, 112 gap, and 96 on the eye. Man, oh man, there you go. Alex Rodriguez, solid hitter, pretty decent defender, not a bad base runner as well. The milestones to top a reward here tonight. All right, so there we go. Your milestones to rewards. Kent Tocovey, Cy Young, Ed Walsh, Fred Lynn, Mark McGuire, and the topper, Alex Rodriguez. Pretty good stuff right there. There. Now, 
Before we go to the tournament, the tournament standings, do want to make another quick note. Another quick note of the cards that were um, the second through 32nd place rewards in Perfect Team Championship Series 7 that happened last month. They, outside of Steve Carlton, so all the PTCS 7 cards outside of Steve Carlton, they are also being put in packs tonight. So we got some more, we got some more packable cards for you all tonight. All right. So before we sign off tonight, let's go ahead and take a look at some tournament standings. And congratulations to last week's tournament top 10, the daily traditional tournament deals, Red Eclipse and the Palatine Pluto's TBD in first place with 240 points. Beham Bells and the Bellingham Bells in second place with 227 points, followed by Galois GKT GKT with 208 points. DPL1, Wadi3, Evil Smokey Bear, Hondo Lane, RDT24, Dr. Sox, and KJ22 rounding out the top 10. In the weekly traditional tournaments, you have Aster31 in first place with the Minneapolis Millers and 181 points. Mac Jacks in the San Angelo Warbirds in second place last week with 129 points. C. Steinhardt and the baseball team TBD in third place with 112 points. BKN Mets fan Scabro number one, Bahoot, KC86, Wadi3, Dekudla, and Ludwig83 rounding out the top 10. In the perfect draft realm, the daily perfect drafts, you have Cito 3 in first place last week with the Baltimore Oh My O's with 78 points. Holophant and the Fun Society in second place with 72 points, followed by Mr. Ree in third place with the Little Foot, Long Foot, and 69 nice points right there. JDA, Mr. Fancier, CMP66, Sipami, Philo1, and Charmin, and Arklick, rounding out the top 10. In the weekly Perfect Draft tournaments last week, you had CF97AB and the London Tigers in first place with 63 points, followed by Isadafo2 and the New Bern Blue Hens with 57 points. Mr. Audit 2 and the Boston Reed Sox in third place with 55 points. Preacher Boy 12, Strato, Shuperudo, NCAP 99, Laertes, Forbes 901, and Breedav 0, rounding out the top 10. Now, as for this week's tournament standings, let's take a look at those. All these standings are current as of noon today. In the daily traditional tournaments, it's Dr. Socks and the Walking Dead at first place right now with 117 points. DPL1 and the Bard Owls in second place with 98 points right at this moment. Red Eclipse and the Palatine Plutos in third place with 92 points. Isadafo, KJ22, RDT24, Frogert, Beham, Bells, Holophant, and Snailman rounding out the top 10. In the weekly traditional tournaments, it is Ludwig83 and the Joe Creedy fandom in first place right now with 61 points. RDT24 in the 90s expansions in second with 57 points, followed by Moonla Moonlight Matt and the Cleveland Flying G's with 57 points. Extaforis, Isadafo, Mawiffin, Slensner, Caleb1722, Scabro number one, and Weldon06 rounding out the top 10. And finally, in the perfect draft realm, the daily perfect draft tournament so far this week, you have BTS Chan7 and the San Diego Manatees, I probably butchered that username, my apologies, in first place with 47 points. Holler and the Alston Wolf Spiders in second place with 47 points as well. McCadcar 3 and the Oklahoma Wind in third place with 38 points. Schmidt Fan, Blue Hen, Sipami, Chief Eagle Plume, 808 Jers, J.A. Sussman, and Wilston 11. Rounding out the top 10. And finally, in this week's Weekly Perfect Draft Tournament so far, you have Curly Karkovis and the Miami Jaws in first place with 35 points. Zen Lunatic and the Sky Bolts right there with them at 35 points. 
Mr. Audit 2 and the Boston Red Sox right there in third place at 28 points. Teddy 02, OBJ, Sean Soul 10, Wino 88, Ail Simeon, SPM, and Mohillion rounding out the top 10 so far this week in the weekly perfect draft tournaments. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Cards and packs and missions are live. Have fun tonight, y'all. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will see you here tomorrow for the This Week in Perfect Team Friday Showdown. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, y'all. DishNet34, signing out. Have a great day, everybody.